This is the final tutorial for modeling one of the chess pieces, and in this case, we're going to work on the rook. This is mostly going to be a lathe type of object, but it's got these buttresses at the top, and that's what we're going to focus on. Our starting point is the profile that I've already created. We're not going to spend any time on that. It's basically the same thing that I've done with the other pieces, I've just created a basic profile that then gets lathed. So we want to focus on the top. Now, I've determined that I want to have five buttress components. And since they're going to be repeating elements, we don't want to have to do all the work five times. I'm going to press the question mark key to go into isolation mode. We need to figure out the best approach to only model one piece and then replicate that to the other segments. Press the tab key to leave edit mode. Let's go into wireframe. I've got a modifier already assigned. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. But we want to do an initial lathe type of operation. So let's come over and add a screw modifier to it. And it will use the object's origin as the center of rotation. So that's what we want. I had basically already assigned the object's origin to be down here in the middle. It doesn't have enough resolution right now, and we need to think about what it is that we want to do in terms of configuring lathe. So if we have 360 degrees and we only want to work on one fifth of a segment, that leaves us with a 72 degree segment. So let's type in 72. And there we have just one segment, but the, the indent for the buttress is going to be in the middle. And in order to make it really easy to identify that center, uh, we want to reposition the pivot point. So press the period key and let's go to active element and in object mode, it will set it to where the object's origin is. Now we also want to kind of come over and consider the resolution. But let's, let's first rotate this. So half of 72 is 36. So if we rotate this, we can rotate and then just type in 36 to get that exactly halfway there. Now, you kind of have to guess a little bit about the resolution that you want. But in this particular case, we're going to be introducing an object that we're going to be putting some smaller geometric configurations into. And we really want to make sure that we have enough resolution to handle that. So I'm actually going to come down here and increase this step views to 24. And that'll give us plenty of resolution. So let's rotate this and there you can see we're going to be focusing on this area, which is where the buttress is going to, going to be created. So let's come back into the top view. Let's apply the screw modifier so we gain access directly to the geometry. Press the tab key to come into edit mode. And if I were to come into face, let's, it's a little bit hard to see exactly where it is, but we want to look at the center right here and then come over and click these four polygons. So there, when I rotate, you can see that it's those. Now, if you're off, so it looks like maybe I'm off by one. There we go. So I had the center wrong. So these four are what we want to work with. So the first thing that we need to do is actually add a little bit more geometry down at the bottom. So press command R and click, hold, and drag, and just pull down arbitrarily about that far down and click. And then we want to do the same thing on the other side, this wall right here. So Command R, click, hold, and drag, but then we want it to be exactly at the same level. So press the B key and then grab one of these points and bring it down until it matches that level. I love that. That was introduced in 4.0. It is such a handy function. So we need to come back in. Let's reselect those faces. So let's come back into face mode and select these four faces, two on either side of the center line, and then hold the shift key. And let's add those on that side and these on that. Okay. Press the X key and we're going to delete those faces altogether. Let's come into edge mode and double click. It'll select that open boundary, hold the shift key and deselect those. And now we can bring up the context menu and then do a bridge edge loop. Now at this point, it is very important to come over and check that we have face orientation. You can see the face orientation is flipped. So we just come in, select everything, come up to mesh, 
down to normals and recalculate outside, which is shift to N. And let's just turn this back off. Okay, so now we're ready to get in and start modeling the detail. And the detail here is that I've got it set up so there's sort of a rounding here. I'm not just going to rely on the subdivision mechanism producing rounding. I'd like to control it a little bit more explicitly. Let's focus on this one half. In fact, uh, I'm going to leave edit mode temporarily. We still have rotation. If I press the N key, we've got rotation applied at the object level. And I actually want to remove that. So Command A or Control A, and let's just apply the rotation. So it zeroes that out. Tab key takes me back into edit mode. And I want to come in in edge mode. Let's come down to the bevel function. We want to set it to segments of two and shape of 0.5, which will produce rounding. And select this edge and then click and just produce rounding there until you can see it intersects an existing edge right there. Let it butt up against that and get right there and then click to validate that. We don't want to have to keep modeling both sides. So let's do this. Let's come into the top view. We can see a little bit of the change that we've made right there. Tab key leaves edit mode. Let's come into the modifier stack and let's add a mirror function to it. If we, if we pull out, you can see it's mirrored across the x-axis initially, but we want it to go along the y. But we've already got geometry in one half of the y, so we need it to bisect in order to automatically remove the geometry on one side for us and then mirror it. You just have to remember that if it's mirroring the wrong side, you can flip the same axis. Let's come down here into merge and bisect distance. This model is a little bit on the small side, so I just want to make sure, just as a precaution, that I don't weld anything together that shouldn't be welded. So I tend to decrease these values a little bit. And that's okay. So now we can press the tab key. We can come in. If you want to see this in edit mode, then just click that little button right there. So let's do this. Let's come over now and let's start thinking about reconfiguring this geometry in both locations. So the first thing that I want to do is put a loop, a cut right here to constrain the subdivision from this curving area from basically passing that boundary. So Command R, click, hold and drag and just pull that down until it gets about right there and then click. Let's do the same thing along here because we want matching loops. That's a really important consideration again with subdivision surfaces producing loops. So Command R, click and pull that down if you want to be very precise. Press the B key, click here and slide down to that point. Then we can do the same thing on the opposite side. Command R or Control R on the PC, click hold and then B key, click and click to there. Press the one key to go into vertex mode, select these, and then press the J key to connect them. And the same thing over here and J. So there we go. We've got those, a nice loop coming around the top. Now we just need to figure out what to do down here. So let's actually just repurpose this loop here. So I'm going to double click it and then press GG to slide it. But you can see there's an overlapping vertex from the bevel operation here. So let's take care of that really quick. I'm in box select mode. So select both of those. And then let's do just do a merge vertices at center. Now I can do this operation again, GG, and we'll pull that up until I get the angle about like that. Let's come around here and do the same thing. Let's just weld merge vertices at center, double click, GG, pull that up. And I'm basically kind of looking right there. So switch over to face mode and let's do this. Let's come in all the way over here and let's just dissolve all of these faces. I don't want to remove them. I want to dissolve them so that when we come down, we dissolve faces and that leaves n-gons here. And that's what we want. This will become apparent here in a minute. So let's take all of these and again, do the same thing, dissolve faces. So if we switch over into edge mode now, we can double click, hold the shift key, and then select these loops. We'll select that one at the top, double click, and then add these to the selection. 
So the end guns temporarily give us a little bit of leeway and latitude in terms of the operation that we're about to do by using the bevel tool in a two, one configuration. When I hold this down, okay, I need to check something. So something's going on here. Let's check something. Let's double check to make sure we don't have any overlapping vertices. So press the one key. I'm just going to select everything and then we'll come back down to merge vertices by distance. And it's telling me it merged 26 vertices. So let's come back in and try this again. Let's come back over into edge mode and reselect along here. And let's try this again. We're still in the bevel tool. There we go. So I had a merged vertex that was from the bevel function we had done here when it butted up and it came to that edge. We had overlapping vertices and that's what was giving me issues here. So that's why I went in and did that merge vertices by distance and it collapsed those and it gave us this correct result. So these are the kind of things you learn to look for. So now that we've gotten that, that in, let's come in and sort of repatch these end gons up. Let's come back into vertex mode and I'm going to select here and here, J key. We'll do the same thing here, J key. Now we've got an end gone here, so I want to put a loop that matches that. So Command R, and we'll put that about like that. Click, and then this point, and this point, and the J key. So you see we've patched that up nicely. Let's do the same thing over here. J key. In fact, I'm going to come to the Move tool so we don't see that widget. J key, Command R, place a loop right about there. Click here and here, J key. So you can see how what we've ended up doing is producing loops. This is one of the things that you try and want to look for with subdivision surfaces is having these loops generated. That's a real key consideration. Let's swing around to the other side. We have this 90 degree angle inside of here and we need to add some geometry there to give it a bit of rounding. So we'll do a loop select, come back over to our bevel in the two one configuration that's very useful we'll just put in that geometry right there for the interior i don't think we need anything else so let's flip around to the other side when i designed the uh, profile i had put this loop in but in fact i'm going to remove that because i want to do a similar thing that we had done to that inside angle is just use the bevel tool in the two one configuration and we'll put that in about like that. So now we can come in, in fact, Command R, I'm gonna put another loop right down about there. We can now test this for subdivision, but if we put in subdivision, we don't have quite enough geometry and it's, it's gonna look very rounded here. So we have a little bit more forming work to do, but we've got the primary structure in place that we wanted to be there. So let's come into the top Let's, uh, we're in edge mode, and I'm going to double click here, hold the shift key, double click here, but I want to deselect those two edges. Now, when we think about this, we have these boundaries, these loop boundaries that we put around here that will constrain the subdivision so it will round across here, but then it will be flat in this area. So the, we need to do something similar up to the top here. So the bevel tool, which we have selected, is in the 2-1 configuration. Now I want to switch over to active tools so I can just hold and select. But what I want to do is I want to get it till you, you see the corner as it intersects the existing geometry. I want it to go just a little bit beyond about something about like that. And there you can see it automatically stopped. But it's got overlapping vertices. When it does that, it leaves an overlapping vertex that you want to be aware of. So let's switch over into vertex mode, move tool. I want to switch back over into select box, option Z. So we do a select through that just makes sure that I'm selecting any overlapping elements, bring up the context menu and do a merge by distance. And it will tell me that I've removed two vertices that's outside of the record area. Okay, option Z. So now we've put these boundary loops in and press the two key. Let's remove these edges. So we'll dissolve those. So we're left with quads, even if they're a little bit funny shape, that's okay. 
double click here and here. Let's come back to the bevel tool and we're going to take it into a 3.5 configuration where remember that 0.5 is a perfectly round profile. So now we can just come back over and produce that nice rounding right there. So let's do the same thing here. Double click this, double click here and here. Because of these end gons, the loop select mechanism won't progress through those. That's okay. We can just manually select. So with select box, this is a situation where the widget is off the record area someplace and I don't want to move the view. So I'm going to switch over to active tool so I can grab any of the selected elements and then just, I'm going to make this bevel quite a bit smaller, something about like that. Now, when we look at this, you can see that we have this loop that comes in and I'd really like this loop to progress around and be sort of flat. We're getting into some, some more subtle details here because we're now working in all of these planar regions. So let, let's just remind ourselves where planar regions are. So come up to select linked flat faces. And once you start working in planar regions like this, you have a lot of flexibility in how you configure polygons, but we're gonna be sort of exact in how we approach this. So when we come back over and select this loop, then we can flatten it. I'm going to switch over into vertex mode, and that will allow me to hold the shift key and select one vertex as the active element to use as a reference. So let's come back, let's come to the scale function. Press the period key and just make sure that it is on the active element. That's why I selected that. The transform orientation is in global, and that's what we want. So now I can scale this tap the Z, the zero key or Z, as you say, in some parts of the world, <laughs> I got uh, a talking to by somebody who said, you should say Z, not Z. We say Z in the United States. Now it becomes a little bit more tricky when we come here. So let's do this. Let's come over here back into edge mode and I'm going to select here, hold the control key and then select here to do a, a loop between function switch back over into vertex mode, hold the shift key, deselect, and then select. That becomes our reference, but this is at an angle. So we're at global and this does no longer match the geometry. So we need to switch over into the normal orientation and there it matches. So now we can come over to the little green handle, start moving it and then type zero slash Z. Okay, and we've reconfigured it. Now, I'm not worrying about this coming down. Remember, this is a boundary loop. In here, these are boundary loops. They're sometimes called support loops, and they're planar, and they just prevent the subdivision from progressing into these larger flat areas. So let's, let's come over here. So let's invoke a poke function press the one key to go into vertex mode. In fact, let's come over to move, select that single vertex there, hold the shift key, select there, bring up the context menu and do a merge at last. And you see how we've reconfigured that. So let's come over here and do the same thing really quick. Uh, let's see, I am in active tool. So let's come to select box and that will work just as easily there. Holding shift key to select the reference active element and then we could also just do S and then Y and it will do the same thing and then zero and click. So if you don't want to come over and use the active tool, you can access those at any time. So select here, invoke poke faces, one key, select that middle point, hold the shift key and then select there, bring up the context menu and do merge vertices at last. And there we go. Okay. So we've gotten all of this modeled in a really nice way. And so now we can come over here. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier to it. Underneath is just is great. So leave edit mode and let's take a look at this in a shaded mode. You can see we've got a really nicely constrained piece of geometry. We have really nice rounding around there, really nice rounding around here. Everything is looking really good. So let's come back into edit mode. In fact, let's disable subdivision right now. We're missing a bit of geometry in the middle, so we need to replicate that. Let's zoom way out. 
Remember, anytime you select a vertex in here, we can get position readout information for it that's going to be relative to the object's origin, which is down there. That's where I set it in the original profile. So if we come in and double click this loop to select it, I need to switch back over. I want to switch back over into a global. Press the E key and then X and then just release. It can be anywhere in there. Now, one key takes us into vertex mode, bring up the context menu, and then we're going to do merge vertices at center. Okay, so let's come into the top view so we can see this. N key tells me that all of this select vertex with all of these points coming into it has an X value right here that if I zero out will match the center of where the object's origin is. And then that completes that for me. And now we're ready to replicate this. So let's press the tab key to leave edit mode. Press Shift and S, cursor to selected. In object mode, it will go to the object's origin point. Now, I've got a rotation. I'm going to go ahead and remove that so we can do this from scratch. We want to replicate this now. And we can do that procedurally pretty easily. Uh, so we need to add an object that will give us the ability to rotate around an axis. So we'll press Shift and A, come down to empty, and we're just going to do a plain axis. Let's set that to something a little bit smaller so we can get a reference, visual reference for that. Now, I'm going to call this for rotation, and it's, gen it's, it's just a construction object. Coming back to our main object, what we need to do is replicate this. So come back to our modifier stack, and we're going to do an array modifier. And by default, it's going to do a basic step and repeat type of a function. But we want it to actually do something really quite different. So let's turn off relative for right now. Uh, we want to use an object offset. So if we enable that, we need to tell it what object to use as a reference. So we come up here and we select that for rotation empty. Initially, nothing changes because this hasn't been rotated yet, and it's going to use the rotation values from this for the offsets. So if we come into the top view here, let's just do this with the widget so we can see it. As I rotate the widget, then the offset is rotated by that value. So let's go ahead and type in uh, 72, and there it offset it like that. So now we just come back to our primary piece, and we put in a total count of 5, and we get that rotated, and there we have our final object. Uh, we want to make sure that it's merging these. So let's turn on Merge. You, this is where you would really want to be careful, because we put, we put in small details, and we just don't want anything to get accidentally merged. And in fact, I can see that there is a merging issue right here. So this distance needs to be reduced. So let's put in 0 0.01, and that works better. Okay, now this is where we could come in and make any fine tuning. Let's say that we wanted the buttresses to be a little bit higher. I could come into edit mode, option Z, so we can go into a, into a wire frame. We're in select box, so let's take these top elements here, move them up so we have a little bit more pronounced buttress. And once that's done, let's look at that again. And then we'll just want to make sure and turn on subdivision so we can see the niceties of subdivision surfaces applied. And uh, there we go. In fact, we could probably turn it up to two. It wouldn't make a huge difference, but it is nice to see it with that final resolution. And that is how I would approach modeling the Rook.